there's a lot going on, man, in the UFO world. A lot of drama, a lot of news. You know, where are we even going with this, man? You know, it's um, you know, it's the the truth is, is that it will need a fair amount of hindsight to really get any kind of grasp as to what's actually going on right now. Because, um, I mean, basically what we're talking about is, you know, there's there's kind of several meltdowns, you know, going on. Um, and when I use the term meltdown, um, if if the image that came to your mind is a a, a young child like melting down in the middle of a playground, that's probably somewhat appropriate. And um, and so the question becomes, you know, um, one is, are people all behaving and acting on all the available data, which is what, what one thing we'll talk about. And then also, um, you know, uh, how much of this is just, you know, I mean, to give you an example, just to put it in context, you have two different YouTube channels that felt that they had, um, uh, each, um, uh, 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 you know, damaged the honor of, of each other and, uh, and, and they've essentially gone to battle. And, but the thing is, is that you could take the fact that they've gone to battle, you could take what they're going to battle over, and then you could also take what their, their, their methods of battle. And, and the problem is, is really it's the third, it's the method of battle. Uh, it's the fact that essentially we're seeing a tremendous amount of um, of of really 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 childish behavior, but I do think that a fair amount of it is based on a misunderstanding, and and I think that's very unfortunate. But I think that people are so wrapped up in what's going on that you know, and it, it's hard because I'm I'm, I'm talking somewhat in the abstracts because I. I want to be very careful, you know, because I really, I, I would have a hard time blaming any one person more than any other at this point. It's gotten pretty evenly, like, destructive at this point. Um, but, you know, but, you know, I, I, you know, how else can I clarify what we're talking about, Dave? Well, I, I think there's a couple of ways. I mean, right now, due to a lot of the drama that's going on, UFO Twitter is actually trending again tonight on Twitter. I mean, there's no reason for it. And the battle continues because, let's face it, this has become, and I hate to use the term war, but it's become a war of words between supporters of Lou Elizondo and his message and those who just want some questions answered and those who absolutely despise Elizondo and what he stands for. And, well, and yeah, it, but, but it, the one, one thing I'll just I'll add really quick is it is it there there is the question of is it is the is what you mentioned about Elizondo is that is that is there anything specific to that related to Elizondo or are we just looking at once again a human behavior where people that love something tremendously and then become disenchanted with it usually become the biggest enemy available to that item? Well, I think I think the shiny new toy has some scuffs on it, right, in, in many people's eyes. Now, we talked the other night when you were on that you don't have a problem with him having any sort of sock puppet uh, type of, uh, of profile out there that he could communicate without mentioning he's Lou Elizondo. I said I did not have a problem with it, yet a lot of YouTube, uh, a lot of... Uh, Online people are. This is a debate that continues. However, yeah. However, and that, that's what I, that's what I was going to say is that I, I've been I've been engaged in, in a debate with with a couple of different people and um and, and two individuals who I, who I absolutely adore, and um and what really kind of teased out of it is that um once again there there's this nuance to it in that um you know there's there's the there's the mechanical aspect of someone having more than one identity. OK, and then there is the the kind of um, the verb version of this, which is like, what are they then doing with it? Right. Because, for example, if someone is just using the accounts to um, talk about subjects they can't normally talk about, um, uh, you know, e even even these things where people are like, well, yeah, but they're, they're using it to, to su support themselves. It's like, OK, but wait a second. If you have an account for your business and you have a personal account and you go like your own business, 
that's not a horrible deceptive thing. So the problem is, is that you have all these different ways of looking at it in both directions where it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. Now, where it becomes very challenging is, is that there was a, a further dialogue at some point where it seems to be that, that essentially that uh, Elizondo was either, um, uh, either speaking fondly of or, or not speaking out against some of his more devoted followers taking very aggressive actions on his part. Now, that's very different than him asking them to do so or for him to be encouraging them to do so. This is them acting on on their own uh, on their own uh, volition, sort of thing. But um, you know, even you know, even if you're not the one bullying with with your sock accounts, if if there are other people bullying with your sock accounts and and you're encouraging them, that's obviously uh, very very ugly behavior. There is unfortunately now a third slant to it, which we can't go into a lot of detail of, but just that there may be an investigation going on, in which case there may have been things done specifically as a, uh, a, a baited honeypot sort of like counterintelligence type situation. And we won't know the details of that or even the reality of that if it is you, for a long you, you time. Said, you said something very interesting. What kind of investigation? Well, just just the rumor that there there's some investigation into this. Well, you got to go into detail. That's what the unbiased UFO report is all about, dude. If you're hearing some uh, cool stuff like that, we need to know about it. Well, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's basically the the idea that that um, and and you know, I want to be just very careful what I say because I I don't want to I don't want to put anyone in a bad spot. But essentially, um, it, it appears okay. There appears to be uh, at least um, evidence worth exploring that there. There are uh, groups of people who are uh, very organized, who are um, really kind of taking organized action and really kind of acting as um, activists, very aggressive activists. And it, it's very questionable what their motives are and some of their methods are very questionable. And so and it's they've become questionable enough as to possibly have attracted the attention of, 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 of lawyers. So there's, there's real potential for, for, you know, perhaps an investigation and some fallout. Very interesting. We should also uh, mention here a couple of noteworthy pieces. Congratulations to Linda Moulton Howe. She's 80 years old, and oh, nice. she, just she just surpassed 200,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, listening oh. to a whole plethora of woo there on a, uh, whenever she broadcasts, I'm not sure of her schedule, but Lou Elizondo was her guest earlier this evening as an anniversary or a, a party. They even popped champagne on her show. It was quite uh, it was quite interesting. It, you could tell the Elizondo interview was recorded and you could see her chat room going absolutely haywire with questions because, well, let's see, Linda was in a different outfit, you know, when she was interviewing Lou compared to the one she was wearing for her celebration. So that was kind of oh, sure. cool. Yeah, and, yeah. and we also have some sad news breaking this evening. I don't know if you saw this or not, but he's a legendary guy in the UFO and supernatural world. Jordan Maxwell has passed away. Oh, yeah. And... Back in January, Jordan had a pair of strokes that very much incapacitated him. We had him scheduled for Lynn Wallington's show on the weekend, oh, a few weeks ago, and we couldn't get a hold of him, and we had to change guests there. But found out the news tonight that his health deteriorated over the last few weeks very, very quickly, and he had passed away. I mean, there there was a man who was in the know. Like, he was a poor man. He wasn't wealthy. Yet all of these wealthy people would come up to him, say, Jordan, tell me about the aliens, or Jordan, tell me about what's coming. You know, like, he would be invited to, con to private one-on-one -on -one conversations with with dignitaries and royalty all around the world, movie stars, musicians, 
even government officials having private talks with him because he was just so in tune. And he always uh, had this very famous story right at the beginning when this all started for him, when he moved west to California. He walked into a diner and met the waitress, and th they kind of started speaking, and she invited him over to her parents' house for dinner. So after dinner, her, he walks in there, meets mom and dad. Dad asks, what do you know about UFOs and aliens? And he's like, huh, like, what's this all about? And father of this girl takes him outside. And all of a sudden, three UFOs come and hover right over top of the property. Huh? And that's when he figured out that they were actually an alien family. And he saw her for a few more weeks, and then all of a sudden the family just vanished, gone, disappeared. Yeah. Family of aliens. Now, there's a man who knows what is going on now. Him and Butch Wachowski are hanging on out. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what to say to that. That's, yeah. Wow. It's a heavy story. It's a very heavy story, but one that anybody you could go on YouTube and check out any Jordan Maxwell video, and he tells that. But, John, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. We are going to continue the unbiased UFO report with the fedora-wearing John Hudson. And, of course, coming up, we also have Shirky Poo's News. Stay tuned. Space Down Radio continues right after this. All right, we're clear. <clears throat> Where do you want to go next, John? Well, you know, it, it just it kind of depends on uh, on on you know on what you want to do and, and where where you know where we think the, the audience will get the most out of it because um, you know I I think that there's um, there's a lot that can be said about the um, um, chosen methods of combat that are being employed. And uh, we could have, a, a, I think, a very interesting discussion about um, alternatives to those methods that people might consider. Um, and yep. uh, do that. And then, uh, and then certainly um, there, uh, you know, was a lot of activity today over at the Black Vault that um, Honestly, you could do um, a whole show on each of those items or, you know, you or cover them well in a short period of time. There's a lot to unpack. So we got lots of choices. All right. Well, let's just run with it. You want to go back to the drama first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's certainly a few things that I think sure. were probably good to say. So Sure. Because, man, has it gotten way... Like even Fonz, you would be like, "Wow!" Like my episode was nothing. Hello, Ann. Waylon Jennings. Oh. I, you know, like that's one of those. Um, like that's one of those songs like um there's that song and then the song the cheers a couple of them that like i just i heard over and over again as a kid at the same time period for a long enough time that they just just branded certain emotions into me it's really crazy but the theme song to the dukes of hazard is definitely one of those things like that that Actually, watching the um, watching the end, the opening scene, like the opening entry scene to Dukes of Hazard on a TV, if I'm oh, not yeah. careful, will actually put me to sleep. Really? Because I, I, because I, I, I instantly not when I was younger. When I was younger, I was into it. But now I get so relaxed when I when it comes on. As soon as I hear the music and I start to see the the scenes, like I just, I just. Uh, I, just, I, I relax so much that then I find myself like dozing off for a nap. It's freaking hilarious. 
You know what I'm looking forward to? <clears throat> hmm. I am looking forward to tomorrow being a brutally busy day. Oh, that's good. I got to wake yeah. up in the morning. I got to uh, take my vehicle into the shop. I got to uh, get all my stuff together, do some running around town, get my taxes in to my accountant. And what else do I need to do? I got to do a show tomorrow. Then as soon as we are done that show, throw my suitcase in the back of my vehicle, drive for five and a half hours to the airport. Well, wait a second. <clears throat> five and a half hours to get to the airport? Yeah, five and a half hours. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I, just, I can't believe that. So basically, I can't live with... With I can't live more than thirty minutes away from an airport, I can't, I, I, like career wise, I I just can't. It it would uh, it would cost so much money and it would cost so much time, um, because the, where I am now, I've I've literally woken up in my house at um, eight thirty, and been in my seat on the airplane at nine fifteen. Beautiful. You first classers. No, that's just Southwest, man. That's no, 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 no first class anything. Southwest. Mm. EMF. I have nine. I have nine big trees in my property. Which one do you want? Hi, Mark Sanchez. Solus One. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you tonight to Crazy Smith and Smithy for the amazing super chats. Very much appreciate them. It's a great way to support what we do on this show on a nightly basis. Thank you to all our new subscribers lately. We are encroaching on 15,900, up to 16,000 pretty quick here, bud. Wow, up to 16,000 awesome. pretty quick. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All yeah, right. I, I, we I will admit, I will sometimes fly business oh, class. Here we go. But no first. Round and third, we're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate all of you tuning us on in. Want to remind you that if you missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read Shirky Poo's Newswire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. We continue on tonight with the fedora wearing John Hudson and the unbiased UFO report. And John, we always appreciate you coming on here. But this, uh, you know, for people who are in Radio Land who don't understand all of this drama that's going on in the UFO world, why are we needing to talk about it? So basically what happened in a nutshell is um, some information came out about the fact that Luis Elizondo had alternate um, social media accounts and the way in which he was using them and why he was using them was called into question. And in the ensuing debate, um, several people evolved into their four-year-old states and began viciously attacking each other in very weird ways that no one's going to be happy is on film. Um, and um, it's crazy. It's, it's, um, it's uh, the thing that's hard. The thing that's really hard for me is that, um, and, and I really consider this a personal character flaw. Um, I have a very hard time not letting it impact my opinion of them. I have a very hard time not letting it um, impact how much um, how much optimism 
I have in their character. And I, I, that's not really fair. I shouldn't do that. People can make mistakes. But it's, it's hard because you're seeing people, you know, I mean, for example, um, you know, take, um, um, let's, take, uh, let's take Mick West, for example. Now, there is a ton of stuff that I completely disagree with Mick West on. Um, but I will, I will never shy away from talking about his, his good attributes. I will never shy away from talking about what he's good at. I will never shy away from giving him credit for what he's done. I will never shy away from talking about the fact that I've talked to him privately and I think he's actually a really nice guy. I think he's a very clever individual and I think he really honestly means well, right? Now, you, one could argue that, that Mick West is my arch enemy. Okay, whatever. Like, I mean, the thing is, is that you can be in some of the, some of the best friendships I've ever had were the most adversarial, right? Um, it, and there's there's so ma many ways to play this. And so you, you take something like, like and, and Mick, if you see this, I apologize for using the example, but it's just, it's the best example I can think of at the top of my head. When when I am critiquing things about, about Mick West's um, work, I'm really careful when I do so. I don't attack him personally. I don't, I don't try to convince you that his argument's wrong. And then when I can't convince you, convince you that he's wrong and therefore his argument's wrong, right? The, 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 we're doing a lot of logical fallacies here, right? We're trying very, very hard to brand people as certain ways so that you believe, so that other people believe you on your judgment of them, right? And it's a mess. And, you know, and honestly, at this point, I I don't think anyone's, um, I, I no, I don't think anyone's uh, guilt free at this point. Um, it's been it, it's actually been pretty amazing, like the, some of the stuff that's come out. But um, but it's all just it's it's all very childish. It's all very personal. And, you know, and the thing is, is it, you know, even at times where I've I've gotten extremely frustrated with Mick West. And once again, Mick, I apologize. You're the best example I have. I I have always engaged with them with the assumption that I'm going to need to continue to engage with him in the foreseeable future. So I want this relationship to continue. I don't want to do things that shut down communication. I don't want to do things that obviously assume that the other person isn't going to exist anymore in two years, which is how a lot of people behave, right? So if we all start really focusing on trying to you know treat everyone as as if the fact that they're going to stick around and we're going to have to work with them so we're going to have to find a, a method of doing so and we you know start trying to really focus on the arguments and if someone doesn't agree with our argument there's nothing wrong with this there's nothing yeah, wrong yeah, with saying i turning, agree to disagree that's what's turned into the battlefield though this I, you're wrong, I'm right, I'm right uh, all the time. And if you don't agree with my opinion or who I like, I'm going to troll you, I'm going to bash you, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to bring you down. Now, yeah. I think we do have to be careful when we say that, though, because there are people out there right now, you know, like Thomas Fessler's disclosure tonight, love him or hate him, what he is doing, uh, you know, where, with the, which has caused a lot of havoc in the UFO world is he is trying to protect the idea that Lou Elizondo sticks around because there is so much hatred for Lou Elizondo. But, now, a lot of people, may, well, let me finish. Please, please, yeah. A lot of people may not like the tactics, but on the flip side, what happened? My, my fear on it is this, what happens to the UFO world? If we lose Elizondo Knowing that the AOI MSG wants to shut everything down, you can call Elizondo a disinfo agent. You can call him a a spy. You can call him whatever you want. But the idea is that he has opened up. If you listen to his interviews, he has opened up with a lot of information that most people haven't found yet. That's what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And that's why my attitude changed about him. I was very critical of him. And the whole to the Stars Academy, which, you know, I called it to be a bust and it turned out to be a bust. And, but with Elizondo, you know, I, I'm a fan of his. 
I'm a fan of the work that he is doing. I'm okay with the fact that he has an NDA that he can't say much. But you have, as much as I say that, you have to listen and read between the lines of what he is saying because there are Easter eggs all over that. I and very true, very very true. You know, so I mean, you may not like the way some people are are going after Elizondo or some people are going to protect him. I will say this. I would say that I fall into the category, if I had to choose a side, that I am a fan of Lou Elizondo's. He will be on this show in late April. And we might even be his final interview for a while. Don't know yet. But I will say this. It's okay, UFO Twitter, that people out there want to ask him some pertinent and potentially tough questions. That's healthy. That's okay. He's put himself in the public eye in order to ask those questions. Whether he chooses to answer those questions or can legally answer those questions is an entirely different story. But to sit there and say that he can't answer things, well, geez, if you had a lifetime in jail weighing above your head, would you? I wouldn't. You break your NDA on something like this top secret, oh, Dave, you're going to jail. Yeah. Jail is the is, was the is the least of my concerns when it comes to breaking uh, such things. Least of my concerns, but yes. yeah, yeah, you would know. You had to sign NDAs for some of the major companies that you worked for. Crazy stuff, thousands of them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but the idea the idea is this: there are the people who are going to say he's a shyster for for putting out. He's counterintelligence. Of course, he probably has two, three, four, five profiles out there looking at what's going on, what people are saying. He's looking for what news we have as well. Every celebrity has, everyone everyone who's ever had a social media job, everyone who's ever had a social media presence for work, everyone who's ever been a celebrity of any sort, everyone who's ever been in politics of any sort, you have to maintain accounts for your, your professional identity and your private identity. If, if nothing else, at that at minimum. But yeah. the thing I, I, I will say, though, is that, you know, there, these two individuals that I, I was talking about, we had, we had a, a, a great debate about, about these alternate accounts ideas. And in the end, I don't think we came to a consensus. I, I think we were still pretty far apart when it came to what you did with the accounts, right? But we were able to have this, this conversation that went around for some time, and we never insulted each other. We never called each other names. We never said, you know, can you believe this guy? I mean, the, the, the rhetoric being used. And the thing is, is that, Dave, I, I, will, I will differ with you in one, in one point in that, well, I agree with you that I, I think that, that it, what, what Thomas is doing to, um, to uh, you know, stand up for for what he believes is true with Lou is, is a very good thing. Um, his methodologies over the last day or two, I, wow, I would be very hard. I would have a very hard time um, standing behind some of that. And, and the, the problem is, is that I, I know it comes from passion. I know it comes from love. I know it comes from pain. I know it comes from all these places that are very normal and natural. But it doesn't change the fact that we every time every every packet of information you send out to engage with someone, after you've evaluated whether it makes the point you want to make, the second thing you have to ask is is does this make the situation more tense or less tense? It's a whole different category of measurement, right? You should never be ratcheting up anything. It's insane. It never gets you anywhere. It's just well, people off. you know what, though? Look, I, I come from it in a different way. And I'll put this in hockey terms. And I know you don't understand hockey terms. But I'll put this in hockey terms. All right? It's called take a number. And what happens is, say number 25 skates up to your best player and slashes them right behind the legs, hurting your, your top player's legs. Legs are kind of important in hockey. You know what I'm saying? Okay, because you need them to skate. 
and for shooting power. So as somebody who would be considered an enforcer, your job is to skate up to number 25, who just slashed your player, and you have some words for him or you give him a shot back. Eye for an eye. That's the way it kind of goes. There's also the rule of thumb where for every action, there's a reaction, whether it's positive or negative. And hey, some I and I came from the code of Amurabi. I mean, we haven't followed that stuff for a long, long, long time. The, the real world doesn't work that way. It's not. It's not might versus. It's not might makes right. It's. It's not. It's not an eye for an eye. That vengeance is actually not. Revenge is not actually something that's codified into the legal system, right? I mean, it's. What it's is, actually about re re rehabilitating. Uh, you know, helping people. Hopefully. I mean, obviously it doesn't happen, but the idea is, is that you're hopefully trying to help people get better. You're, it's not about well, revenge. Well, I understand that, but Thomas Fessler decided upon taking it upon himself and his team to, to protect Lou Elizondo to stand because, up. Hey, that's, that's what they decided to do. They're well, allowed. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know. I get that. I, I, I was just gonna make the comment. I, I always get a kick out of, of when people defend people on their behalf because usually the people who they're defending don't actually want to be defended because they can take care of themselves. But, but the thing is, is it, it's, it's not. That's why I say I admire Thomas's passion. I, I admire his position. I have, I have no problem with his, the way he's assessed the situation. Is he right? I don't know. Um, it could be. Uh, it's not in alignment with exactly what I believe. Well, it's not far off, but it's the way he went about it. It was. It was the tone he used. It was the language he used. It was the. It was the intent of the delivery of what he used. Um, it, it. It. There was. Um, there was a. There was a, a, a. I don't know if you want to call it a vengefulness to it, or a meanness to it, or or. A lashing out to it. I, I don't know what is the a fair. I don't want to mischaracterize it. I, I'd like to give it a fair adjective, but to me, it it felt emotional. Well, uh, I would say this: when there are people out to defend Thomas, when there are people out there attacking your sexuality, attacking your position on things attacking your dead mother, attacking your ex-wife, attacking your husband, attack and putting YouTube channels on it, when you are getting death threats sent to your email account, there's a lot going on there, man, that we don't even know about. All right? I know this because sure. I talked to this. Right? Sure and I'm not... but, I mean, but, but, I mean... We're not just good people because life is easy, right? I mean, like the whole point is being good when it's hard, right? I mean, yeah, and, the, and the and the good point is humans get pushed to a point where enough is enough, and you have to fight fire with fire, dude. I I'm a, I'm a you may I know you're a Buddhist, okay, and a pacifist and all that, and 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 I love that about you. I you do not believe how many guns and weapons I own, Dave. I am not a pacifist. Well. You know, you probably like a nice cut of brie cheese as well. So do I. I know. No, actually, yeah. I'm 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 into violence. I'm not a pacifist. Well, I I, I have swords. I have guns. I, I've been trained in katanas. Um, no, what I love weapons. Well, let me say it this way. At some point. There was, you know, in this whole UFO Twitter world, it's it's gone beyond pushing for the happiness and satisfaction of Lou Elizondo. All right? It has gone well beyond that point. Our radio audience is going to be like, come on, get on with this. What does this have to do with UFOs stealing our power off our energy grids? Well, I tell you one thing though, it can have a massive impact on any future delivery of any information on this topic. It has. Because because the thing is is it, you know, what what you what you now have is you have you have two two YouTube channels that both produce content that I have repeatedly taken advantage of and enjoyed in the past. 
that are, are now going after each other in such vicious ways that they're both behaving as if they see no path back. That's how they're both behaving. They're both behaving as if they see no path back. So what? They're just going to pretend each other doesn't exist while they continue to exist in the community? I mean, come on. We're, it's not that many people. I mean, it's like, I mean, at some point, we have to adult, right? Like, adulting, we will go, right? I mean, it's like, uh, you got to do it. The day UFO Twitter actually adults will be the day that I cannot use certain phrases, like calling Joe Mergia's hair. You I, know, I, like, will, I will forward you the conversation I had yesterday. With Joe Mergia? No, no, no. With um, with uh, John and um, and uh, it was, Car was it Carl? I don't know who it was. Two lovely guys. Mm, I don't know who they are. You actually do, but I'm 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 forgetting their their proper handles at the moment. Well, I could say this, Joe Mergia, if you're listening, your hair is like Velcro, and I'm afraid that if I get close to you, I may stick to you. Very talented writer and, and researcher, Joe Mergia. But he's got brutal hair. Brutal hair. Yeah. You know, we got two and a half minutes. No point in starting the news now. What else you got for us? Well, no, but, but all I was going to say was, was that I really don't think this is anything about the content, right? I think I think questions are, are, a lot of these questions are excellent questions. A lot of the concerns are very, very good. A lot of the, the paranoia, even in some levels, is very, very just. It's just, it's it's the personal nature of it. It's the it's the immature nature of it. It's the vengeful nature of it. It's the um, it's the it's the idea that you, that that somehow when you've been hurt, hurting someone else is going to make you hurt less, which is just so insane. But but I mean that seems to be what people seem to think, which is just weird. But th that that's a problem. Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't know if I agree with you, John. I don't know. I think we're looking at this at way two different sides. Oh, way no, I, 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 absolutely, absolutely possible. But I, the only thing I would say is that, you know, I, um, I like, I don't have any really good examples of of your method ending well. Yeah, but it's not about a method. It's about standing up for what you feel is right. Yeah, I mean, you're well, Mister, I, I, you're Mister Weapons. If you're Mister Weapons guy, if you catch if you catch some stranger walking on your property that's getting a little uh, loud and boisterous, are you going to protect yourself, or are you going to say, "Hey, Buddha tells me not to do this"? Come on, gun guy. Depends on a whole more a lot of factors than what you just gave. Um, uh, it's, it's not, not really. that clean of it. Oh, no, it is. It absolutely is. It depends on where they are in the yard, how they're walking, whether they're carrying a weapon, uh, what, what the weather, I mean, there are so many factors that come into it. Holy uh, cow. It, it, talk, it's, it's talk about blowing something out of proportion. It was a simple example. Well, sorry. That's just how I, that's how I think of it. <laughs> that, that's just how I think. Uh, of it. Um, this, this yeah, why but, I no, love but the, but the thing, the thing is, is it, is it, you know, I, I think I think that you know I, I think that there is there are places in the world there are there are uh, times in the world where um, people could get into fist fights and then walk away. <laughs> 